Hello my friends and welcome. Today we're gonna solve the next challenge of exorcism, our exorcism path. So let's check it out. So it's called Tufer and we'll go here, we click on it and check out what what we should do. So it says Tufer or Tufer is a short for two for one. So it's one for you and one for me. Given a name, return a string with a message, one for X, one for me, okay, where X is the given name, fair enough. However, if a name is missing, return the string, one for you, one for me. Okay, that's easy. So basically, if we have Alice, um, if it's given as a parameter um, with our method, so we give back a string, which should look like this, uh, one for Alice, one for me. For Bob, we return one for Bob, for one for me. If n nothing is given, uh, there well, there's no parameter. So we should say one for you and one for me. Cool. Okay, that should be easy. So we go here and first click on uh, copy here. And then we open our terminal and paste that in here. So cool. So I downloaded everything here. We go to our exorcism dart twofer. So first we open the twofer.dart file. And then we, we also open the test file. Okay, cool. So we have this is our test file, this is our file. So basically what, what should happen? So it says, I have a method. So in this method, it should be either a parameter or no parameter. So how can we do the, this? So we can do it, of course, like this string name. So this is our a method which has a parameter and then we can do the same um, maybe two for two or something and then there is no parameter but that's not cool <laughs> so there is much elegant thing to solve this um, yeah so to solve this so I'll show you today two um, concepts of Dart. Um, so the first one um, is called optional parameters, and this is what we need here. And the second one is expression bodied method. And the second one is basically only for um, yeah syntax and to show everything um, in a prettier way. <laughs> so. We go here and type uh, dart pad dot dev. So, so first thing is um, what we will learn from this concept uh, of optional parameter. Well, optional parameter is a, as a, the name says, it's an optional parameter. So it's a parameter which is there or not. And this we can implement in three different ways. So the first one is called optional positional. And we will have uh, a look at that first. So it's called uh, optional positional. So, and we give it, um, we can do it like this, positional L. And then we give it um, like two parameters, A and B. Okay. So we copy this and then make a method. So it's, we should give it as string and call it like we call it here. And then, okay, we'll say the first parameter you, you have always to give it back so like you have always to 
um, if you call this uh, method, you always have to give it the first parameter. So we can do it like this. We just say string A. The second parameter, you can like you can give it or not. So how can we do that? So we do it by typing everything like as we do it here, string A. But in um, yeah, in this um, what is it called in this brackets brackets. So we say um, string B. And then we say return um, A is and then we give it A and you know actually we don't need that and B is B like this. So perfect. So if I run this, what would happen? We see we have A equals A and B equals B. Okay, so basically this is what, what we have here. What if I delete this one? What, what would happen? What do you think? Correct? So it will return null. Why? Because there's no B and this is optional so you can give it a value or not or you can say B is there or not so we said here there's no B so B is null so we're trying to call B here but B is null it's not there's uh, there's no value in B this is why it's null so this is the first um, optional uh, parameter. The second uh, optional parameter, um, I'll just give it here uh, a little bit of space. So the second one is called optional named and this is a real cool one and you should use this uh, often in my opinion. So let's see how that works. So print optional named and we give it A and um, B again. All right. So we go down here and say string. Oh, we, co we just copy this. I'm too lazy. What happening? What's happening? So. So uh, the first one we do is um, as we did it here. Um, we say the first one is a given one, so you have to have to give uh, the parameter a, and the next one is named. So what does that mean? So if I have something like rectangle, so if I say uh, let's go down here and say um, I'll give it. Uh, double. So I, I need to, um, and I say rectangle. Um, so basically, you say um, the the height multiplied with the length. So you get um, yeah. So this is our rectangle, and when you do this, you should say people should give you height and width. So, but how, how, how people will know that you need these two parameters? By doing this, by giving them the optional named. So you write everything in a, yeah, in this, yes, quickly, I think it's called um, brackets. And then you write string um, or it's actually double um, height and double width. So the cool thing by this is when you have 
when you have an IDE, for example, that um, can like show you the uh, the suggestions, um, and if you write rectangle, it, it will pop up with height and width, so you directly know, okay, I need height and width, so that's really cool, and this we will do also here in our uh, method, so we'll say the second one is optional named, and it should be called B, so we do it like this, and basically return this so like this so we see here is an error um, this is what I said so it needs either high or height or width so we do it like this so B um, needs a parameter that it's a string so you see what I mean, so this could be height, for example, or width, so if you put it here, like height, so that should be fine. But we said we need B, and if I run this, we'll see that A is A and B is B, because we give, we're given B here a value. Okay, so what happens if there's no B? So basically the same thing as here. So we have null. Perfect, because remember optional parameter. So it's optional named parameter. So either it is, it, it is there or not. And by doing the named, so you say B is so b is uh, whoops b is um yeah c for example if i run this you see that b is c okay perfect so i'll copy this and the last one print uh, it's called optional default so so the last one is optional default and we'll see what that means we say print uh, optional default okay and we say again a and b okay we copy this and go down here. Well, what's happening? String. Paste this in. And say string A. So as usual. And now we say it's an optional default. So you know what default means. So if there is no value, so this is the value. So that's basically default. And we do it also in this uh, brackets here the square brackets and then we say string b as we did here but we give it a value b okay so every time if b is not there like b is not um the the parameter b is not given the default value of b will be B. Okay. So we copy this again and put it in here. And say format. Okay. Run. So it should show A is A and B is B. So the cool thing is now if I remove this, okay, and say run, watch what happens. So A is A and B is B. Why? Because we said the default value of B should always be B by doing this. So if B is not given, as we did here, B, this uh, variable B is always B because we, we said it is, 
because it, we said it is default. So I can I can um, what's happening? Uh, okay, somehow my my mouse broke there. So I can say B is if Steve. So if I don't have a value here, I can say B is Steve. Okay, what happens if I give it a value? Like, I don't know, B. <laughs> so it will be B. Okay, so that's basically what we need. So if we go there, we uh, if you go back here, we see Alice. If it's if it's if there's a name given, it should return one for Alice, one for me. So it replace the variable uh, here and says Alice. If it's empty. It should give you the default value. Perfect. So this is exactly what we need. Um, as we did here. Cool. So now we go back um, to our code. So we go here and say first that we have a, a string that's called name and the default value, the default value of name is you. So this is what we learned here. So the default value of B is what's happening. So the default value of B is Steve here. And we say the same thing. So it's you. If you go back, it says, if the name is missing, so return you. Okay, perfect. So we do return um it's one for name one for me dot uh, semicolon okay so we're on our test so we do a dart um pub get first so make sure that you are um in your dart twofer um yeah uh, you are in this path and then say uh, dart pub get so this will get the dependencies i did it already so yeah you get the all the dependencies the the, the files that you need to compile all of that and then say dart run test and now we test our solution and see if uh, there's a problem or not. So, finger crossed, hopefully there's no problem. Come on, okay. 16 seconds, nice. Okay, so one test is good and two, te two tests are skipped. So this is uh, how skip symbol looks like, okay. If we go here to our uh, test file, we see there are three tests. And this test is the first one. So this is, uh, yeah, this run perfectly. So uh, can we see it here? No. So if you go back, um, it should be the one test that there's no parameter given. Yeah, perfect. You see it here. So it should return one for you, one for me. Perfect. So, and if you want to make all the tests run, you should do here false, uh, like skip false, should be everywhere. Um, and before you uh, upload your solution, please do, do the tests and do, well, do the skip false everywhere and run your test and see if uh, your solution works and then upload. So perfect. So yeah, all tests passed. That's fine. Good. So our second um, concept for today is the expression bodied method. And this is, it's, it's really easy one. It's only like syntax. Um, yeah. 
how, how can I say to that? Like it's it's a syntax. Um, starting to dance <laughs> maybe the words come um yeah so so make everything beautiful structured yes syntax structuring perfect that's what i needed so you have the bracket here you delete it and this bracket you delete it return you delete return and instead of all of that you say uh equals Greater sign, so it makes a arrow, and this is basically expression body method. So just imagine you're writing a lot of code, and you have um, a lot of these. Uh, whoops. So yeah, you have a lot, lot of, lot of these. So this is better than, you know the the brackets and return and stuff like that so it's it's more readable and it's you can squeeze everything in a, in a tight tighter place and you can see everything in once so yeah that makes your life easier you can do it you cannot do it um but i recommend if you have just one line of code in your method do the expression body method it's it's beautiful like this okay so if i run the test again it should say no errors. Perfect. So, that's it for today. Um, I hope you learned something. Expression body method and optional parameters. And if you did, show me with a like. <laughs> uh, sub to my channel. I will um, make more videos like this. And uh, we go through the exorcism path and solve uh, all the um, exercises and then we on by doing this we learn more and more concepts about um, yeah dart so have have fun and we'll see you in the next video steve out ciao